Hey everybody, Sarah here. So today I'm going to be going over the morph called Odd with you guys. Before I jump in, I want to thank all the members on this channel for helping to make everything possible. If you would like to become a member, you can click join under any video to do so. You get different perks based on the different level that you choose, so please check those out if you are interested in that. Quick thank you to Reptilinks for helping to support this channel. If you use my code SarahSnake27 at checkout at reptilinks.com, you will get a discount on some of this food for your snakes, and we also get a little bit back from that as well. I also have a website, sarahsnakeshop.com, where I sell corn snakes and corn snake accessories. So if you'd like to check out what I have available, please look at the description down below. I also have a morph market, and so that's going to be down there as well, along with all the other things that I've mentioned. Now you might be wondering, what is this odd mutation and why is it called odd? Odd is a mutation that popped up in Bowling Green State University corn snake breeding program. There is no reason to believe that this is anything other than a pure corn snake. Uh, Bowling Green, of course, has just got their own stuff going on. And as we know, mutations happen pretty randomly. And that's what happened here. It's not the first time that someone at a university has founded a corn snake morph. The first one of these actually popped out into 2005, if you can believe it. It has been almost 20 years since the first odd was produced, and we still hardly know anything about it until today. In their breeding program, they were breeding some snows and some charcoals and uh, some other different morphs like that, and out of a patternless snow or a blizzard is where the odd came from. They, of course, thought that the patternless snow was a result of the odd mutation at first, but it turns out that it was actually just a blizzard, which is what made it appear patternless. However, it was that snake that they believed actually caused the mutation that ultimately gave them the first odd. Odd is characterized by the saddles that get thinner, uh, and they look more like bands that go across the body instead of your typical rounded saddle blotches. Sometimes these spots will even break apart from the center of the spine, and you will see more like spots that kind of go down the back instead. This is very similar to prairie king snake, their natural pattern. In fact, if I could name this, I would probably call it the prairie phase or the prairie mutation of corn snakes. I'm not the one who decides this. Eileen Underwood of Bowling Green State University is the one who came up with the name because she was in charge of it, and we do adhere to the original names from the producers when it comes to morphs. But for anybody who has had a prairie king snake before, definitely definitely recognize the pattern that I'm talking about here. Odd has been proven to be a recessive mutation over the years in the BGSU studies, and it has been mixed with a lot of other morphs. It's been mixed with at least one, maybe two different kinds of anerythristic. We know that it came out of a blizzard, but there have also been definite anerythristic A versions of Odd as well. It's definitely been mixed with Amel, and of course there's been some normal versions of it, but to our knowledge it hasn't actually been mixed with any pattern mutations yet. Hey everybody, Sarah in editing here. I just was reading over some notes and it has been bred to terrazzo and blood red this is test breeding but as as far as i know we haven't gotten any visual combinations yet so just kind of keeping that in mind so we don't yet know what this mutation would look like when mixed with like motley stripe or something else but that is something that we'll have to work on in the future now you might be wondering, why have I not heard of this morph before? Uh, if it's been around for 20 years, I mean, that's kind of a long time for a morph to be around uh, for nobody to really be breeding it. And the main reason for that is because these snakes grow at a much slower rate than the average corn snake does. The odd mutation and even corn snakes that carry the odd mutation, known as het odds, will generally grow a lot slower than your average corn snake. Most corn snakes, I figure, will grow about a foot a year for three to five Five years uh, but when you're talking about odds it can take five to seven or even more years for those snakes to get up to the same size. So it takes about double the time for the odds and het odds to get up to size for breeding, especially the female. And a lot of the females in the study were being bred when they were too small and unfortunately passed away of egg binding. The good news about this is it is believed that the egg binding issues will not be a concern as much if the snake is actually at size. Not too many people have wanted to risk this though, and so a lot of breeders who have read the study and heard of the study tend to back away from breeding them, especially females. 
However, when you actually look at the study itself and the actual numbers, which by the way, I will link all of these documents down below. I got some documents, some PDFs directly from BGSU. So if you would like to see that, I will put it in a Google Doc in the description as well. In the information provided by BGSU, they do mention that yes, females in this study did pass away more frequently, especially from egg binding than the males did. Uh, however, the percentage of odds passing away sooner than expected was only very, very slightly different than the percentage of non-odd females that had passed away. So ultimately the conclusion is as long as the females are in, at a good size, you have about the same chance of them being fine as you do like maybe a striped corn snake. Some stripes have actually been known to have an increased chance of egg binding. That's just through anecdotal stuff. I'm not going to get into it here. Another issue that this morph has caused is slightly lower fertility. One thing that you will see in this study is that there were a lot fewer odds and had odds produced, and that's simply because fertility in general in this mutation is a bit lower than average. My odd female that I got very recently uh, just bred to my het odd male, and so I am going to be doing this, this testing myself. My het odd female is like over 700 grams, and so she has no problem with being able to um, carry eggs to term as far as her size and her weight goes. She also has great muscle mass and she did breed to my het odd male this year. So I am personally going to be working a little bit on this project. I'm gonna be trying to outcross it maybe into larger lines. I'm really hoping that my big female can pass on her big genetics uh, onto her offspring because we really want to hopefully breed that out of them. I'm really hoping that that's, that that size issue is something that can be bred out. After the first one was produced in 2005, it wasn't until 2012 that it was proven to be a recessive mutation. Potentially be argued that it is incomplete dominant because a het version still does affect the phenotype of the animal in that it it prevents it from growing at a normal rate. But at this point, we really don't know, and that's why we're not gonna jump the gun and say that it's definitely incomplete dominant. It could be something that could be bred out over time. A few other things to note about these is that they often do have a slightly higher ground color saturation. You can really see that in the amelanistic. You can also kind of see that in the anery version where there's just a little bit more of that color saturation up by the head. And that reminds me a lot of castagna in that way. There are also little to no saddle borders on these snakes. I haven't seen any odds that had any noticeable saddle borders, despite the parents having noticeable borders. The belly checkers of these are usually pretty much the same as a normal. A lot of the ones that I've seen almost kind of have a bit of a mask-ish look to them, but if you have ever had like any amount of collection of wild caught corn snakes, you know that those belly checkers can look like that even without the mask mutation. You can definitely go find just a wild caught Miami and pick it up and it'll have those split belly checkers. And so I don't think that, that is necessarily a part of the mutation. It it could be, but I think at this point it may just be a fluke. However, we just don't have enough data in that regard to really know that yet. If you would like any more information on the odd mutation, I have a ton of links below where all of my research was done so that you guys can go and look over all of that stuff because trust me, there's a lot of like nitty gritty details that I miss. That BGSU did a really good job of documenting it all. And so if you want all of those details, definitely credit goes to them. I'm just the one relaying it to you. All of this information came from BGSU. The only corn snake that we have ever really seen that looked similar to this mutation is the Stillman corn snake. For those of you who may remember, I believe this was a wild caught corn snake or it hatched out of a wild caught corn snake and it looked exactly like Odd does. However, the Stillman was bred over and over again and there were no other Stillmans produced, so that was just a fluke. However, thankfully, we have that look in the Odd mutation. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I will see you guys in a new video soon.